Welcome, brothers and sisters, to Mormon Movie Reviews, where LDS movie lovers belong. My name is d -Days, and today is December 4th, 2022, and this is episode 64, where we will review Emma Smith, My Story, released in 2012. This has a running time of 1 hour and 37 minutes. It's a biography drama that's rated PG, and this review works best if you've seen this film before, though that is not required, and here is your official spoiler alert. Synopsis! Wife of famed Mormon prophet Joseph Smith Jr., Emma Smith reminisces on her life and recounts experiences relating to the birth of Mormonism to her daughter before she dies. Now, here it begins at the end of Emma's life, and this older version of Emma is portrayed by Patricia Place. And the Joseph Smith and Emma Hale Smith Historical Society, in collaboration with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, tells the story of the restoration through the eyes of the wife of the prophet of Joseph Smith. By the side of her founder, of the new faith stands an elect lady of undeniable courage, Emma Hale Smith Bitterman. Now here we see Emma's adopted daughter, Julia Murdoch. She returns home to Emma and shares several hardships she has faced. Emma also relates to Julia some of her own life's experiences to give her a different perspective and illustrate the importance of maintaining faith amid such trials. Various turning points in Emma's life are revealed as she recounts experiences ranging from her childhood with a father that was very strict and who forbade praying in the home to her courtship and marriage to Joseph Smith and the challenges she faced in being the wife of the prophet. Now, the film flashes back to the Hill household in Pennsylvania when Emma was only nine years old. The fact is God does not interfere in our lives. We must learn to rely on ourselves. Emma, remember. No praying in this house. Now, as a child, Emma developed a deep sense of, sense of religious conviction anyway and a devotion to God. And Methodism became popular in the Susquehanna region in the early 1800s, and Emma began attending that church with her mother at the age of seven. We are soon introduced to a midlife version of Emma played by Catherine Nelson and Joseph Smith played by Nathan Mitchell. And these two lovebirds, they quickly elope and move in with Joseph's parents in Palmyra, New York. We've hauled more rock and built more fence than any of us care to remember. <laughs> that is true. And every one of them, horse high and hog tight, as Father used to say. Mm -hmm. You boys used to listen to me then. <laughs> Unfortunately, the film was not going to deal with Joseph Smith treasure hunting or the reasons that he and Emma needed to elope in the first place. No, sir. This is just a hardworking, upstanding New England family who's not at all involved in the occult. The early Mormon magic worldview is entirely sanitized. Eventually, Emma and Joseph, they try to move back in with Emma's father, uh, Isaac, but that doesn't turn out very well when Emma's husband refuses to show the golden plates to her father. Unfortunately, the film trots out anachronistic and inaccurate Book of Mormon translation scenes as well, even though one would presume that a historical society could get its facts right. Emma did briefly serve as a scribe for the Book of Mormon, though she was later replaced by Oliver Cowdery. It was at around this time in June of 1829 that Emma gave birth to her first son named Alvin after Joseph Smith's older brother. Unfortunately, this uh, child only lived a short time after birth, and this would be the beginning of Emma's childbearing tragedies and the loss of multiple newborn babies and miscarriages that would challenge her many times throughout her life. Emma was one of only 50 church members who would be there on the day that the church was founded in the following year in Fayette, New York. The movie tracks Emma as she moves from New York to Kirtland, Ohio in 1831. And Emma and Joseph in the movie, they have great chemistry on scene. And Catherine Nelson, uh, she's brilliant in her portrayal of Mormonism's elect lady. Now, Joseph endured many hardships in Liberty Jail beginning in 1838 as a consequence of the so-called Missouri-Mormon War. And Emma supported him in spirit and with occasional visits. We see Joseph Smith Sr. pass away in Nauvoo in 1840, this brings up the point that while this movie is trying to be Emma Smith my story, it really ends up being a lot about Joseph Smith, and sometimes Emma is just an afterthought. I do wonder how movies like this, which the filmmakers know will never turn a profit, get made. And it's only because of private donations and church sponsorship of the Historical Society which brought it to the screen. Again, the film, it whitewashes Isaac Hale's problems with Joseph Smith. There's no rock in a hat for the Book of Mormon translation. It shows an anachronistic curtain between Joseph Smith and his scribe translating. It's showing Joseph Smith fingering the plates during dictation, which didn't happen. There's no Kirtland banking scandal. So the faith-promoting narrative is ever-present. The movie basically ends when Joseph Smith is killed in Carthage Jail in 1844, even though Emma lived for another 35 years. 
But because she did not immigrate west with the Berkhamite branch, we don't get to hear that part of my story. If you want to get in touch with me, my email is mormonmoviereviews at gmail.com. I really think it's hard to tell Emma's story because the restoration is really Joseph Smith centered. And they had an older version of Emma try to narrate her life story, but I'm not sure that that really worked. And the film really fails to deal with the huge 600 pound elephant in the room. That's that Emma was, was Joseph Smith's 19th wife sealed to him. The film spends less than 60 seconds on polygamy. It's impossible to tell Emma's true story and not deal more directly with this issue. And why doesn't it talk about her life after Joseph Smith's death? I guess that just doesn't matter. Uh, why didn't Emma go west? These, address, uh, these issues are never addressed. In fact, Emma, she later got remarried to Louis Bitterman, but that didn't make the cut either. This film really feels like a massive missed opportunity. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is really not the best church to bring us Emma's story. Uh, this story would better be told by the RLDS Church, now the Community of Christ, because she more carefully aligned herself with that church after, her, uh, after Joseph's death. Now, Emma Smith, my story, it looks and feels very much like a continuation of the 2000s of the Testaments of One Fold and One Shepherd and Joseph Smith, the Prophet of the Restoration. That's because this historical drama uses some of the same cast and crew and even makes use of a few of the same cutscenes from those earlier productions. And it turns out that's both the film's greatest strength and its greatest weakness. While there are those who really appreciate the sense of continuity, there's a couple of unnecessary anecdotes that feel like outtakes. Now, thanks so much for joining me to review this film. Please like, subscribe, and leave a comment. And join us next time for another episode of the Mormon Movie Reviews, where we will review The Home Teachers. So long.